Hey, this is Russ. Hey, I'm back out on the road again. Yeah, it's way late today. It's past 3 o'clock. More like 3.15 or something. Yeah, what am I doing out so late? Well, <laughs> I had things to do today. Places to go, people to meet. Yeah. What am I riding today? I am on the Magicycle Jaguar Rundi. Yeah, this is the new 48 volt version. Yeah, this bike has a lot of pep to it. And there's also a uh, cruise control option on here too. Yeah, you have, I think you have to turn it on. I can't remember anymore. I believe it comes without it on and then you gotta turn it on, something like that. No big deal, you go into the menu you can do that real easily. I'm on cruise control right now. <laughs> so, what did I do today? Well, I went to see a bike shop today. Yeah, an e-bike shop. Yeah, I think that's the first bike shop, whether it's e-bikes or regular bike, I've been in in many, 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 many years. Yeah, I, was I tried to see them on Monday, but they were closed. They close on Sundays and Mondays. They have new fall hours too, so make sure you check their fall hours. Yeah, this place is called uh, Sam Psycho. I'll put a, uh, a link in the description if you're interested in checking them out. You can uh, check out their website. It has their address and everything in there. So anyway, he, uh, the owner, one, one of the owners is he and his brother. The owner's name is Matt. One of the owners' name is Matt. I met him and I met um, another guy who works there. I believe his name is Kevin. Yeah, nice guys. Yeah, I spent, I spent like two and a half hours there. Can't believe it. We were talking about everything in the world. <laughs> yeah, not just e-bikes. We were talking about everything, things that we had in common. Yeah, he plays music too, just like me. Yeah, so we were talking about some of our past jobs, what we used to do, all sorts of things. Yeah, we have a lot of things in common. Here's a funny thing too. He told me that he... Uh, he, he uh, found me because one of his uh, customers told him about me. Yeah, guess who that was? Yeah, that was Donut Jim. <laughs> remember Donut Jim? <laughs> Some of you guys might uh, remember Donut Jim. Yeah, Donut Jim and I actually did a ride out in Bussy Woods one time. But no, I met Donut Jim uh, a long time ago when I first got my first e-bike. Yeah, that was, that was the Rad Rover 5. I went to visit uh, one of the local uh, farmer's markets and Donut Jim was the donut vendor at the farmer's market. <laughs> yeah, he saw my bike and he came running over. He wanted to check out my bike. At that time, he was waiting for uh, the electric 2.0 to show up. Took forever too, by the way. Poor guy had to wait forever to get that bike. Today, he has another bike. I think he has a Fabulous or something. But anyway, uh, <laughs> that's how I got to know Donut Jim. I call him Donut Jim because he used to be the donut vendor. I mean, his real name's not Donut Jim. Come on. <laughs> so uh, yeah, he told uh, he told the owner of the bike shop about me, and then so he the bike shop owner looked it up, and uh, yeah, that's how he found me. Yeah, let's take a let's take a left over here. We'll put our hand out, and make sure people see us there. There he goes. He sees me. Sometimes you want to make sure that the uh, cars actually see you. <laughs> and that they see you see them see you. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, you want to make sure you make eye contact sometimes. You want to make sure that they stop. So yeah, anyways, uh, Donut Jim and I have done some rides together. One ride, two rides, two rides together so far. So, uh, yeah, so I was at the, uh, the bike shop and uh, we were talking about e-bikes how the bike business was going, how, how they were doing, and you know, all sorts of things about the e-bike business. And then, uh, yeah, I recommended that he, he start his own YouTube channel, you know, to feature some of the bikes that he has at his shop. I, would, I think that would make the most sense, right? Wouldn't you think so? Yeah. Put some comments below. <laughs> yeah, if he, if he watches this video, he should watch those, look at those comments too then. Yeah, give him some encouragement. Yeah. 
let them know let them know what you think uh, bike shop owners should do to help promote their businesses now there's not a whole lot of e-bike shops in the Chicago area really there really isn't you know specialty shops just e-bikes that that type of thing so he's one of them so um, yeah I told him I says he should uh, he should start a YouTube channel feature some of the bikes he has for sale on on the uh, Feature some of the bikes he has for sale. I waved to the, to the car and there's two dogs hanging out of the window and the dog had to bark at me. See, dogs are always trying to get me, I told you. <laughs> Even in the car, they said want to get me. <laughs> and then as he uh, features those bikes, he could kind of show off what, you know, what the features are and show his, his uh, store off a little bit too. You know, it doesn't hurt, right? I thought that would be the easiest way to do it. Yeah. Yeah, and then you get to see the owner too, right? I think people want to see who they're doing business with. Yeah. So that's what I was doing today. And since I was uh, tied up doing that, I, I didn't go out. Now, when I came home, I looked at the weather reports and they said it's going to rain later on. I don't know what time it will rain. It doesn't look like it's going to rain now. So I got outside to go riding a little bit, even though it's a little bit late for me. I, I could see some dark clouds up there. But uh, I was thinking too that maybe I should just stay home and do a green screen video. And just not go out because it's getting late and I know that kids get out of school around this time. Don't want to run into bus traffic and stuff. And stuff. <laughs> so <laughs> I. Uh, I was going to do that instead. My plan was is to use the uh, the new iPhone 15 Pro Max to do my green screen videos where I'm recording myself. Now you know that I had been using a couple different cameras to do that. Um, I first started out using my Canon G7X Mark II which is a point and shoot camera. I was using that for a while to do it but as you might know, that camera doesn't really shoot in 4K, and I actually upload my videos in 4K. I'm going to take left here. Um, I upload in 4K, and of course, that thing only does 1080p. So when you take a look at the, uh, the video of me against the moving video that I shot in 4K, I look kind of fuzzy. So I said, yeah, that's not good. Right, i got to hit him with the bell here. Thank you. So, um, so I said no, I can't. I can't use that. So I started using the GoPro. But the GoPro shoots uh, fairly wide, right? I mean, you could put it in normal mode, but still, it shoots a little wide, which means uh, to just get a headshot of me, I've got to crop in a little bit. If I don't crop in, I can move the camera closer, but then um, your camera creates a shadow. <laughs> so, <laughs> shadow on you. So that's no good. So you gotta shoot from a certain distance just to avoid the shadow hitting you. And uh, so I said, well, what else can I use? Well, hey, I got a new iPhone. There's no reason I can't use that. I can set that up for 4K video. So I thought, hey, yeah. Let's give it a try, you know. I think it would work perfectly fine. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. Um, I think these kids are getting ready to play soccer. So I have to kind of get through here. There's a lot of parents out on the, uh, on the walkway here. Yeah, a lot of soccer guys here. So let's hit them with the bell here. Yep, gotta be careful with all the kids around. You can never tell what kids are gonna do. So yeah, I was gonna I was gonna use the uh, the new phone to do the green screen because I've got to get it ready for the winter time. Now, somebody asked me recently, you know, your, uh, your videos are outside uh, riding videos. How are you going to do that during the winter? I told him, watch during the winter. 
No, if you actually seen any of last year's things, that's exactly how I do it. I run videos of me riding, and these are older videos of me riding. And I run that in the background, and then you see me on top of that video because I green screen myself on there. If you don't know what green screening is, I think most people know what green screening is nowadays, don't they? Yeah, the weather, the weather person does that, right? They stand in front of that weather chart and they're talking and then you see the whole United States behind them. <laughs> yeah, that's green screened. The whole theory behind green screen is that you don't wear anything that's green, okay? Because most people don't wear green, believe it or not. It's probably the one color that uh, is the least used. So there's a thing called a chroma key, and what happens is the, the software kind of looks at anything that's green and wipes it out, <laughs> all right? Just turns it to transparent, essentially. So if I'm standing in front of a green screen, my background essentially gets wiped out, and then you put that video on top of the other video, and it looks like I'm standing in front of the, uh, of the, um, uh, the, the writing video that I'm doing, right? Thank you. So that's what we do during the winter months. Yeah, it's not uh, not a fan of riding in, in the winter. So I will typically ride up until about 50 degrees. Now it's not that 50 degrees is the thing, it's that when the wind from that 50 degrees hits you, it feels a lot colder than 50 degrees, all right? And so the ambient temperature being 50 doesn't mean anything. It's the wind chill that gets you. So um, I determined pretty much 50 degrees is where I, I need to be in order for me to stop riding. Anything below 50 degrees, I really don't like being out there. So what's the updates on some of the new bikes coming in? I, I mentioned there was another bike coming in. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, finally. Uh, Got notification from FedEx that it's on its way. So now FedEx has mentioned that it will be here on fr uh, what is on Saturday. Yeah, we'll 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 believe it when we see it. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't have much trust in FedEx's uh, uh, guesstimation of when things will arrive. If if their app does not say out for delivery, it's not coming. But. I do have a gentleman who's interested in the KBO Ranger, and he's expected to come in on that Saturday at 4 p.m. <laughs> so if uh, FedEx is gonna deliver, let's hope they deliver before then or after then, otherwise I won't be there to accept it. So, what are you gonna do then, right? Let's go forward here. How much battery life do I have here? Okay, I am down to three bars out of five. And the reason it's down so quick is because I didn't charge this. And the last time I rode the bike, I didn't charge it either. So I just took it and then went out. Yeah, it's down to two bars now as I'm hitting the throttle. Yeah, we won't go too far. I just wanted to get out, tell you what's been happening and let you know that uh, I wanted to, to do what I was doing today. So that's that's what's coming in. There's another bike coming in for review. And um, yeah, I'll get that in there, ride it around, get some impressions of it, do a video about it, let you know how I thought the bike was. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's not a new company. It's, it's a company we've worked with before. So, yeah, so we all know each other at this point. We have trust everything will go well, so. All right, what else has been happening? Oh, let's talk about the Engway uh, X24. Remember that bike? <laughs> Yeah, that bike was offered to uh, uh, the person who bought my Troxxas bike, but he, he's declined the bike. He's decided uh, not to go forward with it. So am I going to uh, sell it? Well, I was thinking about it, I would, but I think uh, I might actually keep that bike. Yeah, I might hang on to it. I, I think what I'll do, and one of, one of the determining factors will be, I think I'll change the um, handlebar stem 
raise that thing up a little bit and see what I think. If it feels good, I might keep that bike. If it's not high enough, then I might sell it off. <laughs> right now, you tend to lean forward on that bike because, um, like I said, it's got an aggressive uh, stance to it. You know, you're, 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 you're supposed to lean forward on it. I mean, that's, that's, that's the way it's designed, but hey, that doesn't mean I can't change it. So I thought, well, yeah, if I, if I change out the handlebar stem, maybe it'll be something I'll just keep. Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, I mean, one by one, bikes are disappearing on me. <laughs> uh, if, if the gentleman picks up the KBO uh, Ranger on Saturday, then at that point, only one more bike is available. And that would be the U-Free City Robin X. That will still be available until I decide to put some more bikes on there. I kept looking over the current inventory of bikes and, and um, I, um, I don't know if I'm really, really ready to give up some. Some others, that is, I mean, although we need the space, that's, that's for sure. But I, I do like, uh, I do like swapping out bikes and riding different bikes as I go, right? <laughs> friend of mine just said to me today, he says, what do you do? You, you like change out bikes like people change out their socks or something? Or, I don't know how he said it. <laughs> uh, no, he says, uh, did you, uh, do you change out bikes like, uh, like you change clothing or something? I go, yeah, basically. I do a different ride on a different day, it's a different bike. <laughs> That's the fun part about having multiple bikes, right? And how I choose bikes sometimes depends on where I'm going and what I'm doing. You know, um, you know the, this particular one, the Jaguar Rundi, is a 20-inch bike. 20-inch wheel bike, I should say. 20-inch <laughs> bike. 20-inch wheel bike. Um, yeah, the wheels seem kind of small for a guy that's as big as me, but it works. <laughs> Yeah, we were talking about wheel sizes when I was at the uh, bike shop. And uh, I said, you know, I, I would like to see more 24-inch bikes, 24-inch wheel bikes. But the thing is, there's not a whole lot of companies doing it. So the supply of 24-inch wheels and, and tires are kind of limited. You know, if more manufacturers did it, then, uh, you know, it wouldn't be such an issue. But uh, not that many manufacturers do it. So... You know, tire companies are going to make whatever's popular, and if 26 is the popular size, they're going to make 26-inch wheel uh, tires for them, right? So, I um, I just said that if we can get enough manufacturers to think about maybe doing a 24-inch size, I think um, I think the companies would turn around. The the tire companies would say, "Hey, everyone's making 24 inches. We better we better start making some tires, right?" It's kind of that catch-22 until one guy does it and then another guy does it, and another guy does it. It won't catch on until people start doing it. There are some companies that do offer 24 inch wheel sizes on their bikes. It's not like nobody's doing it, but it'd be nice if um, more options became available for people. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if, if you are, I would say if you are five foot 10 and under, 24 inch uh, tire might be really nice. There's a lot of people my height <laughs> and my size. You know, I have an inseam, inseam of about 30.5 to 31 inches. If you're in that range, 24 inches would, I think, would be a perfect size for a guy like that. 26 inch tires, it's not the tires that are the issue, it's the bike frame. You know, if the bike frame is too large, especially if you have a step over bike, uh, it becomes an issue. Now, step through bikes, not so much of an issue. Yeah. But uh, uh, just a slightly smaller frame feels kind of nice. Yeah. Feels better than I thought. You know, I, you know, the Area 13, give you an example. When Area 13 told me that they were going to send me a bike, I had the option of a 24 or 26. At that time, I didn't know what a 24 would do. I had other 26-inch wheel bikes. I figured, yeah, I'm not going to stock all these different sizes for uh, inner tubes and everything. Just give me a 26. Well, that was a pretty tall 26-inch uh, frame. <laughs> yeah, 
got me thinking maybe I should have gotten the 24. At least for that brand, right? So anyway, that's that's just my uh, my thoughts is that maybe the 24 is better. Mrs. Wright has been advocating for 24 inch uh, frame as well and 24 inch tires. She says for even for her, she's about 5'4", maybe? 5'4", five, 5'5", five, five, something like that. She says a 24 seems to be a, a good size that would fit her. She still feels that the 20 inch wheels, which people would tell her to go get a 20 inch bike, she says it's too small. She says it feels like a kid's bike. You know, this one I'm riding here, it kind of does feel kind of small. <laughs> well, I mean, for me, uh, because I'm, I'm bigger and taller than her, but it does seem kind of small. But then a 26 might seem too big for her, right? So that's why I keep thinking, you know, if you're in a certain height, let's say you're, yeah, let's say 5'3", five, 5'4", five, to 5'10", five, 5'11", five, maybe, under six feet, okay? 24 inch might not be so bad. Yeah, it's better than the 20. You know, for, for a tall guy like like uh, 5'10", and 20 inch seems kind of a little ridiculous, right? Anyway, that's me. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you think the 24 would make a lot of sense or not. The thing is, I know that the manufacturers sometimes do watch the channel and sometimes they do read the comments. So, you know, the comments that you make, you know, could be helpful for them and help us out too, same time. So why comments are important on the YouTube channel. It helps push the video out too. More people get to see the, bi uh, the bike. They get to see the video uh, when there's a lot of interaction with people. I think that's how a lot of the uh, video got pushed out for my senior video. You know, the one that I made like two months after I bought my first bike. Yeah, a lot of you guys came because of that. And um, I think it was because people shared that video. They shared it with their friends. They said, hey, take a look at this video. This guy's talking about bikes for senior riders, things that you should look for, things you should look out for. Yeah, that pushed the video to the point where we had over a million views on that video. So yeah, things like that happen. All right, let's cross over here. All right, that's basically all I have for you guys today. <laughs> I don't have a whole lot. Anyways, if you're interested, go ahead and hit that uh, like button and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. It does help my channel out. We'll get more videos out in the future. Talk to you guys next time.